Well, today I'll be relying on the camera's autofocus. Hopefully that won't be a fatal mistake. So I want to give you my opinion of the Ranger Sila, if that's how you pronounce it. I'm pretty sure it's not Sila. It's a Turkish word. These are made in Turkey. And it is a 20-gauge semi-automatic gas-operated bullpup shotgun with 3-inch chamber. Pretty interesting design. And uh, I made a video about it not long ago. Just trying it out for the first time, which didn't go terribly well. However, as I found out now, that was because of crappy cheap ammunition. I've tried it with different ammo and it runs flawlessly now, as far as I can tell. All right, let's take a look at it. First off, it is unloaded. And don't freak out if I point it in the direction of the camera. There is no camera persons, just tripods. So no safety violation and all of that. Bullpup, of course, very compact, very quick and easy to shoulder. In fact, because a lot of the mass is in the rear, this is really easy to hold. You can quite easily hold it with one hand because of the way it's balanced, it's not gonna be tip heavy. And uh, you can fire it this way too, if you like. Not that that's very accurate, but um, you can. It's got flip up sights that it comes with which work very well. You can also mount optics. Of course, it comes with a carrying handle. What I found a little odd is that it came without the fiber optic rod for the front side. It just wasn't there. I asked the, the store where it was ordered and um, apparently it was delivered like this from the factory. It just wasn't inserted. So, I mean, you can still technically use it, it just doesn't have the fiber optic front side. So, a little weird. The construction is all aluminum alloy, 7075T6. The upper and lower receiver, handguard, trigger, magazine and magazine follower, etc. is all aluminum. And it's got this really nice Cerakote finish. This one here is the Distress Bronze, which is by far my favorite, but they have plenty of others. They have several different colors and the distressed versions. It's, it's a long list, so you have plenty of options to pick what you personally prefer. The charging handle is ambidextrous. You can put it on either the left or the right side. However, the ejection port is right side only. And the deflector, by the way, does a very good job. Most of the ejected shells fly forward, some more sideways, but it tends to just Go in front of you. The ambidextrous safety I find easy to operate. To turn it on with the left thumb and off with the right index finger works pretty well. Although my friend William said that he doesn't quite like it, he finds it a little bit more difficult. And sometimes when firing, the the safety can can bite you a little bit. I notice not nothing serious, but uh, just you notice it a little bit sometimes. It's got a flash hider and the barrel is chrome lined. Overall weight is 3.4 kilograms or seven and a half pounds. So pretty manageable. It comes with three magazines. One is, is this shorty thing here that only fits two shells. So that's for Canadian hunting regulations because you can only have a maximum of three rounds, apparently, or shells in this case. Kind of weird, but I don't know anything about hunting. So that one is pretty pointless for target shooting. And here's one of the two long magazines that it comes with. It's originally 10 round, but has been restricted to five rounds in Canada because it's a semi-automatic center fire. Uh, if this was pump action, it would be unlimited, but um, yeah, it's semi, so. Five rounds only. Yeah. Anyway, pretty easy to insert. At least once you get used to it. In the beginning, um, you, you may sometimes hit the wrong angle, kind of, but you do get used to it. And uh, you can just slap the release. There you go. It came with this bag here, which is quite nice. And it's got quite a lot of accessories in there. The one-point sling, the magazines as mentioned, a cleaning kit, earplugs, 
safety glasses and of course the tools you need for this assembly as well as several chokes and the manual <laughs> speaking of which the manual is very shall we say minimal in fact uh, it doesn't even show you the complete disassembly it does not show you how to remove the bolt there's also very interesting cases of broken english I can only guess they use Google Translate for this, even though I would expect better results from that. So uh, yeah, not the greatest manual. Anyway, so the disassembly is a bit of a pain in the butt compared to a lot of other firearms that I've had. So let's go through it. So it's already on safe. Move the magazine. Um, the pin has to be pushed out with a tool. You can't do it without, at least. I have not found a good way. It's a captive pin, so it stays in. Then you have to unscrew this collar or whatever this piece is called with the tool that it comes with, which by the way, it does mar it, which I don't like. You'd think that the tool that's being delivered with it actually does a good job of you know, not scratching up the, the surface, but it is what it is. If this was plastic, I would prefer that. So, that comes off. Flash hider comes off. Like so. And then... Damn! <laughs> the dinner bell has been rung. Removing the charging handle is also a good idea for that. There. And now, where did I put the thing? There we go. There's another pin right here. This comes through. And now, this whole thing comes forward. And this piece also comes off. So from here, I'm assuming you have to remove this Allen screw to slide it off and get the bolt carrier out which I have not had the patience for, frankly, so I just held it open and cleaned it like this. Maybe I'm just being unreasonably lazy here, but keep in mind this is only the third time that I've disassembled this, but I've definitely had plenty of firearms that are field stripped a lot more quickly. The other complaint I have is pretty minor, just the, uh, the riser here really requires a tool. There, so you basically need a wrench in order to loosen and tighten it. That could have been done a lot easier with some kind of thumb screw. But I do like that there is an adjustable cheek riser. That's definitely a good thing. Other than that, once I use proper ammo, no problem with it whatsoever. And that's it already. So you oh. can shoot mine. If you <laughs> and there it goes. This sucks when you have sore muscles. <laughs> the first time I had some really weird issues with the cheapo 20 gauge ammo I got from Walmart. Surprise, surprise, I know. And uh, there were a few failures to eject. Uh, one particularly weird case where the plastic hull itself was ripped off the brass and remained stuck in the barrel. And I've had the charging handle pop out while shooting. Now, uh, I cannot eliminate the possibility of user error. Maybe I did not insert it properly before firing it, but um, it, it could be better. I mean, I would definitely prefer if it was threaded or just secured by more than just friction, basically. Losing it somewhere in the field, of course, would really suck. So there's that. However, it shoots really nicely overall. 
Um, it's, you, as you can imagine, recoil is pretty mild. At this time, there's no 12 gauge version yet. There's only this 20 gauge and a 410 as well, but uh, the, the 12 gauge is supposed to come as well, uh, which would really be preferable in my opinion, unless you're very recoil sensitive, I suppose, because 20 gauge is not as readily available as 12 and costs basically the same or even more in case of buckshot. Uh, in fact, 20 gauge buckshot is kind of crazy in price, at least here in Canada. So um, there's that, but um, yeah, it works quite well. It's fun to shoot. It's non-restricted in Canada and um, it looks good, at least in my opinion with the distressed bronze in particular. And I do like the outline overall, but um, of course bull pups aren't everybody's cup of tea. The machining seems very clean overall. As far as I can tell, action smooth, easy to operate, like I said. And um, yeah, there's a lot I like about this, really, uh, aside from the ammo, because of, of price and availability, as mentioned but I would definitely recommend this. Like at least if you have the chance, if you are looking for a, a semi-auto shotgun and you have a chance to try one of these out, I would certainly recommend doing so. Right, I almost forgot to talk about something very important, namely trigger pull. I do not have a, a way to actually measure the, the trigger pull, but uh, just subjectively, it's kind of an okay trigger. Like it's, it's not super heavy, but it's definitely not light either. What I don't like about it is that you can't really tell when it's about to break. Rapid fire works pretty well too, because the reset is fairly short. So trigger could be better, but again, for shotgun reasonable enough in my opinion. That's about it. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this review. Thanks for watching and have a good one folks. If you haven't seen it before, I've got an Amazon store where I list certain things that I personally recommend like swords, knives, video and audio gear, tools, etc. And I'll keep adding new stuff and comments. The link is down below.